art friends. We're going to talk about sustained investigation. It's an AP art thing. So if you're an AP art, you should be paying attention to this video. Let's jump right in. Number one, what is a sustained investigation? Well, it's a series of artworks that demonstrate how you explored in depth a particular idea or concept. So we're going to come into that in a little bit more detail. But just overall, you have to have an idea or a concept that you are going to explore. You're going to investigate. You're going to explore it and sustain, meaning the whole year you're going to explore this idea. Next, your sustained investigation. Here's three things you need to know. Number one, your sustained investigation must be a question. That's right. You have to ask a question and it must be in a question form. I've heard they'll take off a whole point if it's not in a question form. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Number two, your art must show that you explored your question. That's right. You're not just going to explore it, but your art is going to demonstrate that you explored it. So each piece of art you make must in some way show that you explored your idea throughout your entire sustained investigation. Number three, your art must show also that you experimented, practiced, and revised. So that means you want to experiment when you're doing whatever you're going to be doing. You're going to be like, hey, I'm going to try this new thing. I'm going to go in this new direction. I'm not going to do the same thing over and over and over again. I don't need 15 pictures of the same thing. I need to show that you're experimenting. Number two, practiced. So let's say you're whatever you're going to draw a tree, you practice drawing the tree. And then you can actually have a piece of art, maybe a sketchbook that shows all these practice trees that you drew. Just as an idea, you're going to show your art is going to show that you practiced whatever it is you're investigating. And number three, you revised it. I practiced drawing a tree. And then I said, you know what? The leaves on this tree don't look right. I'm going to experiment and try to different way and now I'm going to redo that tree. I'm going to have revised it and I have a piece of artwork that shows the before and after tree. So those are three things you're going to want to do in your sustained investigation. Are we cool so far? Let's continue. Here's tips. Sustained investigation tips I will give you. My three tips for you are number one, take risks. Do not play it safe. Try things that may or may not work. If it fails, it's okay. It can still be part of your sustained investigation. And you can just say, I took a risk, I experimented, and it failed. And that's cool. Number two, pick something you love. And by that, I mean both your sustained investigation question, you love the question, uh, you love the material you're working with, the media you're using, make sure that you love everything about it. If you don't pick something you love, you will get bored halfway through the year and you will wish that you never took AP art. So, but if you do something you love, you will be able to do the last tip, which is number three, don't stop. Just because it says 15 pieces in the portfolio doesn't mean you only make 15 pieces. Make as many pieces of art as you possibly can because when we get to May and this thing's due, you wanna pick your top 15, not just have 15 pieces. I hope that makes sense. So those are my tips for you. Continuing on, here's three rules that you need to know about your sustained investigation and, and actually everything about your AP portfolio. Number one, your name cannot be on your art. Lots of people like to make a painting and then they like to sign their name. You cannot do that because the people who are going to be uh, grading your portfolio are not allowed to know who it is they're grading. It's supposed to be anonymous. And if your name is on it, they can be like, oh, I know that person. So do not put your name on your art. Number two, you cannot use AI, artificial intelligence, in any art making or writing. When I say art making, that means you cannot use it to create sketches. You cannot you know, add filters to something and then be like, that's the art I'm going to use. It cannot use any artificial intelligence to help you in any way. And that includes the writing. When you're writing your questions, you can't ask AI to come up with a question for you. You have to do it on your own. And number three, you cannot use any photos or any materials that are copywritten. So if you have a piece of photograph that you get off the internet and you want to use it as a reference, it has to, it can't be someone's uh, a photograph that's, that is, that would have a copyright on it. You have to take your own photos is usually the best way to get your references. Now, if you have a picture of a tree and you're kind of using it for a reference, but it's part of your painting or something like that, but you're not taking the whole photo, just that one part of it, that's fine because you're just borrowing, looking at it as a reference, but you can't say, I just found this picture, this great photo of a tree, and I'm going to copy it exactly because that would be copyright infringement and that's not allowed. Let's get back to what a sustained investigation will look like. Here are 14 sustained investigation ideas, and they are provided here as inspiration for you to develop your own sustained investigation. So hopefully these will give you a little something to think about. So our number one 
uh, idea. Here's uh, the idea would be artists work with limitations. Now, remember I said it had to be in the form of a question. So what limitation is this artist using right here? Well, she's using Skittles to make her art. So her question could have been, how could I create art limiting my media to food products? And maybe she used Skittles for one product, but she didn't do 15 pieces just with Skittles. Or maybe she did, who knows? She wanted to, <laughs> she wanted to create art using only Skittles. I mean, that would be a great question. How can I create my art limiting my media to only Skittles and have to come up with 15 pieces of art like that or maybe she's going to use bananas in the next one and she's going to use meatloaf in the next one we don't know but that's just a question of, on an idea based on artist work with limitations here is again is artist work with limitations and when you look in the picture you can see that the guy's holding a really big stick which would make it hard to draw so his question could have been how could i create art with limited physical abilities. So maybe he always draws with sticks and there are different types of sticks, logs, little sticks, cine skits, tiny little, tiny little sticks. I don't know. Or maybe he limits himself to the physical limitations. One time he draws with sticks. The next time he's blindfolded. The next time his hands are tied behind his back and he can only use his feet. Uh, next time he draws with his ear. I don't know what those physical limitations would be, but uh, that would just be an idea of a question. The rest of these I, inspirations. I'm going to show you the rest of the slides. I'm not putting questions and I'm doing that purposely because I want you to come up with your own questions. I don't want to provide all these questions for you. So I just did those two artists work with limitations with questions just to give you some idea of how it would work. So here are some more, some more inspiration. Uh, exploring scale. The picture on the left is actually a miniature museum and she's sticking her head in it. So it looks like she has a giant head. So giant head, small art. Uh, one on the other side is uh, Klaus Oldenburg and it's a giant spoon with a cherry and it's actually a bridge going over pond there. So you can see how scale can be used in art. Number two, it doesn't have to be realistic or look like anything. It can be, you could be exploring non-representational and you'd have to come up with questions about this. Um, why, uh, what about the non-representational are you actually trying to achieve? But it's just another way to think about making art. Inspired by math, you could just be like, wow, I really like the, I really like, who likes math? Everybody likes math, right? Isn't that your favorite subject besides art? So you'd be like, oh, I've got these different math ideas. So I can come up with some questions how I could make art based on math. Um, exploring from observation, uh, right there on the uh, left-hand side, uh, like urban sketching or going out and drawing stuff from life. The other side, scientific observations of, of the Carolina parakeet, which are extinct. Yes, we used to have parakeets in Carolinas, but now they are all I mean, they're dead. They're extinct. So anyway, uh, time is an element. The ice cube men melting, it won't be long before they're gone. The Joshua Allen Harris, if I've ever shown you a video of that, when the subway car goes underneath, air blows the bear and he comes to life. And then when the subway passes, he dies down to just being garbage again on the street. So how can you use time as an element? Artists use appropriation, really taking two things and putting them together like this really would be an Andy Warhol Campbell soup can and turning into a spray can or uh, the Mona Lisa, well, Lisa Simpson. So putting those two things together, having two ideas and combining them together. And you might be like, that could be a copyright infringement, maybe with the Mona Lisa, but um, you get the idea of how artists appropriate. Number, this one is exploring words and text. So how could you use words or text to create pieces of art? Uh, inspired by math. The piece on the left is actually, would you believe it? It's actually data that this artist collects from the weather. So each one of the little um, orbs and sticks all represent uh, temperature, wind, uh, waves. I'm not really quite sure, but she has all this data and she just makes uh, duplicates of whatever it is. So there's 20 balls because it was 20 degrees out that day, or there's 13 sticks because uh, the height of the waves were 13 feet, and then creates these sculptures out of that. That The other side is knitting. You, know, you can use any material if you're doing 3D. You could be knitting um, science-like organisms from the bottom of the ocean. Destruction in art. Here's an interesting idea. Uh, way, way here. He's got his uh, uh, Ming Dynasty vase, which he just dropped and took a photograph of it. And the cookies on the left, actually the artist didn't like his art. So he took all his art and he burnt it up and then he baked them into cookies. So he destroyed his art. How can you use destruction in art and come up with a question for that? Um, hybridity, mixing two things together, getting a new thing based on that. Two things like the creepy little dude that's kind of a hybrid of human and an animal. Or actually using light to um, produce an image, but having like wooden blocks or letters to actually form that image, kind of cool, a way of creating something new by mixing things together. Uh, exploring repetition, the dots, the red dots with the yellow dots, 
or little squares as it may be, uh, repeating themselves over and over and over again. Or Tara Donovan hanging, uh, those are styrofoam cups all glued together and making a ceiling installation. How can you explore repetition, uh, synthesizing, putting things together? The one on the left, actually, if you look really, really close, it's a giant picture and it's made out of garbage. It was all garbage collected from a dump and it was all put together to make that picture. And the one on the other side is all plastic. Um, there's some people that take plastic they find on the beach and they make sculptures out of it. So they synthesize, put things together using other materials. Exploring juxtaposition, it's got opposites. Think of opposites. So you see on the left here uh, what would look like, I guess you would think very feminine type of dress. She's got a, a little thing on her wrist there, all very flowery and feminine. And then she's carrying this very large saw that she will probably use to chop her um, ex-husband in half with. And on the other side, uh, this beautiful scenic Monet painting, it's so beautiful. And then there's trash in it. So things that are opposites put together in the same Picture, how could you explore juxtaposition as a question? That would be a fun one. So that's all the ones I've got for you. I hope this video helped and just come, let's talk, let's talk it over and work it out and we're gonna have a good year.